Hey busy bees, welcome back. Melissa here with Bee and Cozy Stitching. And today we're gonna to be working on part three of Let's Hear It for the Red, White, and Blue. Now at this point, you should have your blue star field all completed and sewn together to the size that you need for the project that you're going to be making. Now remember, mine is gonna be king size, so mine is quite large, and I know you can't see the whole thing here, but I really have to tell you, I'm really excited with the way that this turned out. I really didn't care for it when I first started. I don't know if that's because I had to sew so many of the blocks together or what. I don't know. I just know that now, now I really, really like it. So I'm going to pan out so you can get a little better look. This is my star field. And so now today, today we need to start working on the red and white stripes. And in order to do that, let's, let's do a little conversation first. Now, however many blocks, remember this is our block. So however many of the blocks that you have wide, and I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So my blue star field is ten by eight, nine, ten, eleven. Mine's ten by eleven. So I know in order to just do the star field alone, I'm going to need eleven rows. 10 blocks wide because however many wide this is that's how many blocks you're going to need to have in the red and white for length and then however many rows down that's how many red and white rows you're going to need for your width yeah width so my length is going to be 10 my width is going to be 11. that's how many i need to get the first part of our flag quilt finished. Then when it comes to adding the layers that go way down here, <laughs> that again is going to be a design option that you're going to have to figure out how many rows you want. I'm thinking I'm going to want at least 11 rows beyond to balance out my star field, but if 11 rows is going to be too wide for my quilting, then I'm gonna have to cut mine down and so I'm not gonna have as many stripes as I am blue star field. So yeah, you know, I mean, it's, it's an optical, it's an optical process. Whatever looks good to you, that's where you should quit. Wherever you run out of scraps, quit. Um, if you remember, I didn't have enough red scraps to be able to do this project, so I needed to do another thrifting trip. And on my thrifting trip, I was able to find four more shirts, and I'm really excited about these four shirts because they're going to add a little more color, a little more texture, a little more variety. They're going to give it a little bit of oomph, a little bit of something. As you look in the blue field behind me, we've got different textures. We've got planes, we've got solids, we've got stripes, we've got checks. We've got all different kinds of texture going on. So when it's all finished, it looks good. It, there's interest to it. It's not blah. It's not plain. Plain is fine. But I want a little something more because I'm going to do an all over quilting design. I'm not going to um, detail quilt this. I'm just going to do an all over design. And so when that happens, you need to have a little more texture in there to give your quilt a little more interest and a little more, I don't know, variety. Again, it's visual. It's up to you. You're the maker. Whatever you have for scraps, that's going to be just fine. For me, I didn't have enough. I wouldn't have been able to finish the quilt at all. So I got four more shirts. So in essence, I have about four more yards of fabric. 
because usually when you harvest your fabric out of clothing, out of shirts, there's usually about a yard of fabric in there, unless you got a really teeny tiny one for a skinny person. Uh, but an average size person, there's about a yard of fabric in there. So now I'm going to have to harvest that fabric, and then I'm going to have to strip that fabric and then cut it into our pieces that we need to make our blocks to continue on with the next section but that's okay that's going to be great so what we need to do now is we need to cut our reds and our whites into the size blocks that you need so depending on what size you cut here if you went one and a half inches two and a half, three and a half, four and a half, whatever size you cut. Again, this is what we're going to cut for our red and our white. So as an example, if you cut one and a half inch squares, your rectangles were one, one and a half by two and a half, because remember you double whatever the size of the square is for the length of your rectangle. So if this square is one and a half inches, this is one and a half by two and a half and if it's two and a half it's two and a half by two and a half two and a half by four and a half if it's three it's three and a half by six and a half if it's four it's four and a half by eight and a half and likewise so whatever size your square was you're going to double it for the length of your rectangle so now you need to cut your reds and your whites the same size as you cut out your blue. So whatever size you picked, that's again what size you're going to cut your red and your white out of. And once we go ahead and get that done, then we'll meet over at the sewing machine and we'll begin the process of putting our pieces and parts together. So, you go ahead and cut all your reds and whites, and I'm going to go ahead and cut my red and white, and then we'll meet back at the sewing machine and continue from there. Okay, so now we're back at the sewing machine. I had to put a sweatshirt on. It's getting, getting really cold in here. Winter's a coming. So, what I've done now is I've taken all of my squares and rectangles that we've caught that we've cut up and I've separated them out into piles so I have my lights and I have my darks and what we need to do now is connect the dark with the light doesn't that look good oh I can't wait to have that done and we need to connect the light with the dark boy doesn't that look different but anyway, this is what we need to achieve next. So in doing that, I'm going to set these aside. I usually take about 10, 10 pieces and sew 10 pieces each together and kind of go from there. But it's very simple. We take our rectangle and we take our square. We put our right sides together and we stitch out a quarter inch seam along the top edge which is the shorter edge of the two and when we get that all finished then we end up with our um, section that goes into our block that looks like this so what you need to do now is go through and sew all of your squares together next to your blocks and then we're going to press these and when we press them we're just going to press to the dark side because remember it doesn't really matter which direction that we press them because we're not going to line up any seams when we sew these together we're going to flip them opposite so we don't have to match anything up. So it really doesn't matter which direction that we press in. We just need to go ahead and make sure everything's nice and pressed out and ready to be put into the next step. So go ahead, get all of your part A's with your part B's. Remember, you want a light on one side, a dark on the other. And that's just to give it some more interest and some more contrast when we get it all put together. Um, 
it, it really visually whatever looks good with the scraps that you have together is going to be just fine because in the stripe in the red stripe field we just want it to read red so we're not trying to you know we're not trying to make something fancy here we just want to get a little interest and a little contrast going so go ahead and get those started and then we'll meet back here in just a minute okay gang so now we have all our subunits sewn together so we have our rectangles sewn onto our squares and we have our darks with our lights so what i like to do next step is i like to separate my piles out i like to make a pile of what i consider the darks and i go based on the rectangle because that's the part that has the most fabric and you're going to see it the most so i divide out my piles these are my darks and then these are my lights okay so once you have them all divided out so that you know what you're calling your light and your dark we have to take these subunits and we have to sew them into our blocks so let me push these out of the way now that you've seen them make a little bit of room here and simply by making our unit we take a dark and we take a light and we flip the squares opposite each other so that we have um yeah you can see okay so we have a square on the left and a square on the right and the rectangles are opposite and that way we have no seams to match this is a review because this is exactly the same as we did for our blue blocks in the star field so once you get together which ones that you want to do you know which light you want to pair with which dark and etc etc till you get through the pile you're going to stitch all of your block your subunits into blocks and remember you the number of blocks that you need is determined by how big your star field is my star field was 10 by 11 so i'm going to need 10 squares for a row 11 times does that make sense okay so i'm going to need a lot of these little blocks which is why i have a lot of subunits and yeah so it's going to take me a bit to get all of this done but that's what i'm going to do next here i'm going to work on creating my block units see very simple two subunits sewn together quarter of an inch makes a block this is a block so go ahead and work through your pile of reds and once you have all of your red blocks put together then we'll get at those white blocks and then we'll get to the design wall so we can lay this out sew up our rows finish up our quilt and yay then we're ready for the quilter and we'll have a wonderful quilt finished out of scraps and whatnot yeah I'm excited my favorite kind of quilt so you go ahead and get it your pieces I will get it my pieces because as you can see it is gonna take me a long time to get through my piles <laughs> wish me luck and I'll see you back here in just a few okay so now you can see that my subunits are turned into blocks and my blocks are turned into piles I've got a pretty good start here enough that we can continue on to the next part and so you can see how these actually come together um, I, I'm not so much worried that you learn how to put the subunits together because again it's review it's exactly the same thing that we did when we put together the blue blocks for our star field and it will again be the same when we do the white blocks for the opposite strips with our red now I, I'll pan out and show you 
so that you can see I'm not even close to being to the point where I'm going to be done with my quilt. I again, we're we're doing this a king size quilt. It's going to take me a bit to get this put together and really truly I wanted to get the video out so that you could all get started and moving on your quilts so that you knew the next step and you knew where to go from there. So now you see my reds, the very next spot, and we're going to pan out here, so excuse me just a minute. As you can see, I've got my star field up there and ready to go. Um, yeah, I don't know. Okay, that should work pretty good. So now what we're going to do, we talked about this, because mine are 11, I need 11 blocks and they're going to go this way. Now, obviously I'm going to start at the top, but you can't see the top. So I'm putting the blocks in the field where you can get a good view of them. Um, the blocks are going to be sewn together end to end to make a long strip. Just like we did in the blue field, we're doing the same repetitive movement with our red ones. Now, however large your blue star field is, that's how many of these you have to sew together for your, uh, for your stripes. Mine are 11, so I'm going to need 11 of these blocks to put together, and I'm going to lose you really quick here. So I'll just stop here. And then I'll, we'll pretend that's 11 blocks going out. And that's going to be the top. And then the next strip is going to be white. And again, it doesn't matter. We're doing the same exact thing with the white blocks that we're doing with the red blocks. I'm just going to show you how to do the red. And then you can go through and do your red and then do your whites the same. So same thing with the white. You're going to make your subunits. Then you're going to make your blocks. You're going to sew however many blocks you need for your star field. If it's only five wide, then you only put five red together, then five white together, then five red together, then five white together. You're going to alternate every other row. And then I'll go dig some of the white ones out so you can just get a visual of how this is all going to go together. But what you're going to do is alternate your rows, which are going to be compiled of your blocks. One's going to be all red, one's going to be all white, and so forth, until we get all the way to the end. Oh my goodness, this is going to look so cool. I mean, look at this, you guys. I'm really excited. We're on our way. Our flag is being born. Let me grab some of the white blocks and we'll put those up there, even though they're not sewn together yet. Um, I'll take you with as I go across over here so that you can actually see <laughs> where I'm at with my white ones. There. <laughs> now you can see I still have some red blocks to put together and I've got my whites. Now I've got some interesting whites and we can talk about these for a minute. Even though my whites have color to them, they primarily read white as a solid. So they're going to look really nice together. Don't be afraid to use texture. I'm also going to put some gray in with my whites. It's a light shade of gray. It should go well. My whites, even though they're in one pile, they've got different textures. And I don't know if you can see the textures or not. But as you can see... I have just a ton of sewing to do yet before I get ready. And, you know, check in in the weekly chats. You'll get to see my quilt once it's finished. I'll make sure and put it out there so that everybody can get a look at it and see it. But as you can see, I have just a ton of blocks to put together.
Okay, so I'll grab a few and then we'll head on over to the design wall and see this put together. Okay, so here we go. Now, um, yeah, this is so much fun. We'll get some of these in here so that you can get a bird's eye view of what this is going to look like when it's all put together. I'm excited, you guys. This is really going to be pretty when it's done. And you know, like I told you before, I was thinking it would be kind of yucky, but boy, I couldn't have been more wrong. This is so cool. This is something else. Yeah, I'm really glad I did this. What a great repurpose of all these leftover shirt bits from a quilt that was done for someone else. And all of this would have landed in the landfill. And yeah, I'm really excited about this, you guys. I think this is going to be lovely. Just lovely. I need a little more room. So it's going to be off a little bit because these aren't sewn together yet. And I'm sorry. I really meant to get a whole lot more accomplished. Um, but yeah, next time I film, I'll make sure that I don't do a king size project. Because that's a lot of quilt to try and get done in a very short amount of time so that you guys can see the process and how it all goes together. So, yeah, well, anyway, you're kind of getting the idea here. Um, and, and, you know, there'll be more texture once they're sewn together and it'll look much nicer. Bear with me on this one. And I'll make sure and show it to you on a weekly review so you guys can take a look at how this finally ended up turning out and get a view of it before I give it away. Okay, so now you're getting the idea. See how nice that looks? And if you use the different colors in there, even the gray looks really good in there because it gives us just a little bit of a pop because the white, the white can get really boring. So we need a little something to kind of spice it up a little bit and give us a little bit of something. Otherwise, it's going to be really plain and dull. So don't be afraid to use different textures. Don't be afraid to add a little bit of color in there, but a little bit of color, not a lot. Remember, it ha if you squint and look at it, it has to read white because our flag is red and white and blue. So see how we have different textures in the blue, different shades of blue but it still reads blue and we have different shades in our red but it still reads red so yeah I'm excited so this is what you're going to do you're going to put your blocks together for whatever the width is that you need until you get to the bottom of the quilt where you need to run the strip all along the blue and into the color because then you're going to double that amount. So for me in my example, this is 10. So I'm going to have to put 20 together to get underneath my star field to go all the way across to continue it so that it looks like an actual flag. That's what I'm going for here. I want it to be an actual flag. And don't be afraid to use the layout in your pattern. Um, don't be afraid to keep that as a visual as you're placing this together and maybe just try the size that they have listed in the book instead of going hog wild crazy with your scraps like I did. But remember, I have a person in mind for this quilt and they had a specific size that they needed. So that's why mine's a little different. And besides, I'm going to get to use all these scraps up. I'm so excited. But that's what we've got with this quilt. This is how it's going to come along. 
and I'll give you a view. You've got your blue and you've got your red and white stripes going. Yeah, it's going to make the most gorgeous flag possible. I'm super excited. Stay tuned so you can still see what it looks like when it's all finished. I've got a great quilting design to put on it. I'm excited to show that to you as well. I really hope you give this pattern a try. The subunit is so easy and can be made in any size. The block goes together wonderful. We don't have to match any seams. It's super quick, super easy. You can get a whole bunch of them done in a very small amount of time. Um, as long as you don't go king size, because man, <laughs> that just takes forever. Oh my goodness, what was I thinking? But no, no, we're good. We're all good. And I can't wait to give it away. Maybe I'll be able to catch that on film as well so that you guys can see the actual giveaway. That, that'll be fun too. I'm excited, but Again, I hope that you're going to give this pattern a try. I hope this one has inspired you. Try other fabrics. They go together phenomenally. Don't just get rat holed into thinking, oh, I can only use cotton. Cotton's great. I love cotton. Makes beautiful, beautiful quilts. But if you only have a few pennies, Remember, you can get about a yard of fabric out of a good average size shirt. And it's probably only going to cost you maybe a dollar, maybe two dollars. You can't beat it. You can't beat it. Mixes and matches extremely well with all your cottons. Just go on an adventure. Try something new. I'm super excited to see what you guys come up with. Don't be afraid to post pictures on our Facebook page. Don't be afraid to leave comments down below. We love to hear what you guys are doing and see what you're doing. And if we can help you along the way, don't be afraid to ask your questions. I'm super, super excited. I can't thank you all enough for joining us on this. I know it took a while to get to the end, but thank you for hanging in there. I can't wait to see what you come up with. That's what we've got for now. So happy stitching, everybody. We'll see you soon. Bye for now. Bye.